It's taking two minutes. We're about, uh, there we go. All right. Now, I'll add screen, add screen. All right. All right. Let's see. Sevi, can you check real quick if we're going live? Mic check. Um, Facebook. One, two, three. No, no. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see. On Facebook? Let me see. On. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going live. All right. Let's see. Uh, where is the chat? Joey Fresh going live just now. Okay. But I want to see the, the, the chat. Like when people leave comments. Oh, well. All right, let's get to it. Okay. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome around the world. Sponsored by Spotify. I'm your host, Joby Fresh. I have two amazing, three amazing guests with me going on tonight. Uh, we have Brett. Brett, real quick, uh, introduce yourself real quick. Let uh, everyone in the audience know who you are and wh where you're from and who's your team. Hi, this is Brett Sadler, diehard football fan, been a football fan for, I want to say, uh, past thir um, 17 years. Been a football fan for about 17 years. Um, I uh, have two teams, actually. I, I have the Chargers and the Rams. I'm a glutton for punishment because <laughs> I've been following the Chargers all these years. <laughs> But the good news for me is I've got a team to fall back on in the NFC, and that's the Rams, you know. So, uh, and that's pretty much what I've been doing my whole car uh, foot a career as a football fan is falling back on the Rams, basically. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm happy to be here today on the podcast. Um, and I'm just going to share some thoughts about recent, some recent events, um, with both of these franchises, both LA franchises. So thanks for having me on, Joey. Thank you, Brett. Uh, we also have our uh, New York Bills in the house. David, can you please honor, uh, introduce yourself real quick and who do you, who's your team and where you're from? Yep. So uh, I'm originally, I'm, I'm David Cordray. Uh, thank you for having me on the show again, Joey. Um, I'm originally from uh, Western New York rochester buffalo up towards canada uh and i live in san antonio texas now i've been here for about 20 years uh but die hard die hard bills bills mafia <laughs> nice oh we got the the mafia rolling through and then we have the last the most upsetting <laughs> hated fan of all but my my homeboy i like to introduce i'm sure Mr. Sevi Mendoza, please let the audience know who you are and who's your team and where you're from. Yes, sir. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Joey, for having me on the podcast, Talking Trash. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, Sevi Mendoza, <laughs> born and raised San Antonio. We in cowboy country, baby. Uh, I've, I've been a cradle cowboy since the beginning, uh, since birth. Uh, so... Uh, been a Cowboys fan all my life, man. Uh, got, you know, uh, remember the times when I was growing up as a, as a teenager or somewhere around there with the Bills uh, playing in Super Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys and all that stuff. So good to have, uh, you know, good to be on the podcast. Dallas Cowboys. Oh, my God. You guys are looking <laughs> okay this year. So. Yes, and sir. Before we go into the, the biggest game that we're talking about this weekend, we got this Sunday, we're having the Bills versus Chicago. I mean, the Bills versus um, uh, Cowboys. Okay. Um, then we also have the uh, Seahawks versus uh, Seahawks. Um, David, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, then... We just had an amazing, uh, what do you call it, interesting game last night. Uh, Brett, would you like to share what happened last night against uh, the Chargers versus 
the Raiders? Um, well, uh, to, to sum it up, Joey, it was um, a complete catastrophe for the Chargers in every sense of the word. Um, if I didn't have the record for the worst uh, halftime deficit in Thursday night football, it's darn close. Because there's no excuse to go down 42 points, 42 to nothing in the first half. And I understand that I'm missing one of the top the quarterbacks in the league. I understand that. But there is no excuse to go down 42 to nothing to a team like the Raiders, who aren't all that good. Uh, last time I checked, the Raiders were had the exact same record as the Chargers entering the game 5-8. and eight. You know, uh, which makes the the loss that I had that my team had e all the more poignant and all the more painful. You know, it's it's just it's it's and I think the loss is a manifestation of a lot of things. One of which is number one, poor what? What, Joey? Can you think of what I'm about to say? Poor what? Poor oh, leadership. Oh, poor leadership. Poor leadership from who? The front office the front office of the Chargers, namely the Spanos, all the way down to the rest of the, everybody who works in the front office. That's whose fault this is. As a result of, and that last night's game was a culmination of lack of leadership from the top. And, and it's not just this season, it's the past several seasons. Um, well, guess what? They hmm? let him go today. What, um, yeah, I was going to get to that in a second. Yeah. Um, this is a knee-jerk reaction by the ownership, yeah. by the Spanishes, yes. to let them go. But I, I, I really think that that was more of a scapegoat move, Joey, yeah. Yeah. than anything else. If you want to know the truth, folks, it's more of a scapegoat. Uh, public outcry and everybody, well, I got somebody to blame it on. Guess what? We got we to gotta let you go, Staley. We got to let you go, Brandon Staley. My question is, why didn't they let him go before – Today. Do you feel like it was like maybe your offense coordinator that could have been the big factor or maybe could have been your defense coordinator that could also be the big factor? Just just the latter rather than the former, Joey. Oh, okay. The defense. Yeah. The defense's ha coordination has lacked. The defensive line has lacked. When you look at the, the Chargers have been, over the last three seasons, since Staley, under Staley's helm and Staley's leadership, 29th in the entire NFL in terms of defensive ranking, what do you call that? Uh, they were they were ranked 29th, 29th. In, a, in a defensive category. So the bottom of the list, All, near the bottom. Yeah. They, they're not. Yeah. They're more than 29 teams in the NFL, yeah. but yeah. darn close to dead last, right? Yes, yeah, dead last. Mm -hmm. That tells you something. Uh, closest to, I think maybe who is the last one that's not doing that good? I think maybe uh, can I say Washington? Because Washington won like two games. So they're four and eight now. Um, there's no one really different that everyone's been really competitive. I mean, you kind of threw your chance to the playoffs out the window after last night against the Raven. I mean, the LA uh, Las. Why can't I speak tonight? The Raiders. <laughs> to the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. To the, and so I, I don't want to say. Team besides your team. I want to back up. I think that it wasn't just last night. I think that the, the playoffs were a lost cause, Joey, yeah. for the past three weeks or so. Not just last night on Thursday Night Football, not the result of that debacle. That's not when my playoff hopes evaporated. Yeah. They evaporated two or three weeks ago. After you played the, the Cowgirls? I mean, I thought for the Cowgirls, I thought you guys want to beat the Cowgirls. Uh, real quick, before we dive, dive into it, I know we have Sevi, who's a, a, a diehard Dallas-loving fan, real quick. What, what was your thoughts about that game against the Chargers going in, uh, playing against you guys a couple weeks ago? Oh, well, I mean... I don't think we had any problems because look at where Chargers are at, you know. Um, uh, unfortunately, you know, for the Cowboys, man, the Cowboys just, you know, doing – Dak doing his thing, you know what I mean? Um, I think, honestly, uh, they had no, no doubt that they were going to lose that game, bro, you know. So, yeah. As a result, what do you think? Do you think who who lost confidence? You talk. You talking about the players losing confidence? Are the, were the players giving up? Is that where you going with that? No, no, no. I mean, I think uh, the the players are are uh, totally uh, just 
really excited to be uh, doing what they're doing, you know. And then, with David, what's your thoughts about that? I know that you guys are about to be uh, competing against this Sunday afternoon. I think it's one uh, one o'clock ish, well, our time, but three o'clock yep. your time. Yep. Uh, what, I know you guys are going to get ready, prepared for the cowgirls getting into this. Um, what's your <laughs> expectations and what's your thoughts, knowing that, of course, the Chargers wasn't able to do it? Uh, bench, uh, the Eagles couldn't do it this last week. Uh, yes, I, everyone out on my uh, Facebook live right now. Um, shout outs to Nick, Greg, everyone that's following. There's a, I see a chat going on. Dak Prescott for MVP. Uh, my opinion, I think he's on top of the five list, but as a, a main contender to win it, not in my book. I think that he still has not have the leadership because he played a lot of weak teams to give him where he's at right now in that position. Um, but we're going to find out going against David and his team. Before I move forward, David, please. Like what's your expectation going into this uh, upcoming game against the Dallas Cowboys? So as a uh, as a as a lifelong Bills fan, uh, I I uh, I got to remember back to uh, you know losing two of our four Super Bowls in a row to to Dallas, you know, um, and uh, so there's there's a deep grudge in there, you know, it was forty years ago or thirty five years ago, but uh, believe me, it'll be on their minds. But uh, so. Like I said the last time I was on the show, the Buffalo Bills are a strange team this year. We're, we're extraordinarily talented, capable of beating anybody in the NFL, but also capable of losing to anybody in the NFL, right? Dallas Dallas has been playing good football. You know, uh, they, they look good against the Eagles. You know, uh, yeah, they've, they've played some soft teams, you know, and struggled against a couple of them, you know, but uh, so have we. So have we, like, uh, I was saying before we got on the podcast that it's coming down to turnovers for me this weekend. You know, uh, if uh, if we have one turnover or less, I, I say the game's close and we we can pull it off. Uh, if we have if we have more than two turnovers, if we have more than two interceptions uh, or two interceptions or more, um, I, I we could possibly get blown out. Um, you know. Uh, just being realistic that we're, we're playing, you know, a top tier team, you know, I, they're definitely, you know, in the top five teams in the league right now, you know, uh, and you know, uh, they, they've been showing it the last couple of weeks for sure. Well, you know, I, I really anticipate a good game. <laughs> um, you guys, I feel like that, you know, Josh Allen should definitely bring the heat in the beginning of the first, the first half. I think as Eagles, we did, we lack, of execution the first half into the game when we played against Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's always room for growth and always room for correction. And yeah. I am, I'm excited to see what Monday is going to look like going against the Seahawks because I, I felt that, you know, Jalen Hurts has, you know, regathered his thoughts and not having a funk and was and able to really get with the team to make some adjustments that we, I felt that, he could go back into this Monday night game to come out as a, the quarterback be, prior before the 49ers because I'm looking at it that 49ers basically we took an L after the 49ers and going to back to back an L with the Dallas Cowboys kind of mentally, physically hurt a quarterback. But you got to understand, you know, we had Dallas. We we I mean we played Dallas. We played the Chiefs. We played the you know, you guys, the Bills, then Dallas again, you know, strong teams. You know, there was a, a post that came out saying that from the easiest schedule to the hardest schedule, Dallas was the third easiest schedule this year. The sixth was the Ravens. The, uh, and then from the hardest, the hardest uh, schedule was eighth, 49ers, and number one was the Philadelphia Eagles. And no one wants to say that, that, uh, Dallas Cowboys had an easy schedule. We're, we're, I, I feel like going into the end of the four weeks, you guys are going to be the high competitor. The uh, the Buffalo Bills are going to give them a, a run for their money. And so that's my that's my takeaway, my opinions. Uh, Brett, what do you think? Yeah, I um, I did think they were going to give them a run for the money. No question. Uh, no question about it. You know, the biggest thing right there, Joey, is for, uh, you know, with the Bills, I was talking to David about it, is the weather, you know, not that I'm putting excuses or anything like that, but 
you know, there, there it is. It, David was saying that it was, it's been snowing, right, Dave? Yep. And yeah, then they, not only that, uh, I think they have forecast some rain. So, um, you know, I'm pretty sure Dak was uh, training with some, uh, <laughs> training with some uh, water balls or something like that. But I think he's going to be ready, brother. Yeah, sure. uh, he's he's gonna need to train in a walk-in freezer because uh, <laughs> Buffalo, Buffalo's a little chilly. Yeah. Oh, I bet, dude. I mean, as we know, us Texas boys don't do really well in freaking weather like Wisconsin or or New York. What were you gonna say, Joe? Well, I'm saying back to you, Stevie. I, I felt that the element, knowing that after the Eagles beat you guys the first time, right? I'm just, you guys have been home consistently. What's going on for two months? Now, taking that element out of AT&T Center into an open field is a game changer for a quarterback because when you're nurtured oh, yeah. in an inside facility and now you're exposed outside, now the I element's going to be – I love it. Right, yeah. I'm just saying that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is right here, right here. But when they expose, we're going to actually see how – I mean, Josh yeah. Allen, the Buffalo has been practicing right now in this cold, affecting weather. So I think that – you know, it's going to be a game change, changer for Element. Now, can Dak surprise everyone and execute with those fire balls to, to Lab and to Gallup? You know, maybe he could. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be a blowout, but I'm saying that Dallas could be a potential to give Bills a good run for their money. You know? Oh, yeah. Do I, do I, what I want to lose? As an Eagles fan, yes. You know, you know uh, we have a fan that says, cry, Eagles cry. But, you know, I laugh. I laugh when I see that. I love it. I don't cry. I laugh because, like, I know a lot of people don't like to say it like this, but we're, we're still the champs of the the, of the con you're, you're, the you're, conference. You're, you're conference yeah, champions. Yeah, we're still you're, the conference champions. Champions. Let me interject. Let me interject. But for some reason – Let me interject. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I just want to – I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Didn't mean oh, to steal no, no, your no. thunder. But yeah, yeah. Joey's Eagles are – the NFC champion until someone snatches it away from them. Am I not correct? You're 100% yeah. correct. So, they have to take it from the Eagles, whoever it is. The Cowboys, the 49ers, one of those two teams, that they, they have to take it from the Eagles. So what does it do to young athletes' minds when they're the team to beat in the NFL and next thing you know, they're fighting to get out of the wild card? Well, now, look, check out this per perspective. It's best to be in a wild card than be in the first seed because you're going to be off two weeks. Now, you're having that momentum fighting each game. And then when you go into the to the division finals and you're already heated to go to the person that's or the team that's actually took two weeks off, don't you think it's going to be a good like four days before they get the momentum back to play that game? Yeah. I mean, of course, we wanted the first seed. I'm sorry, you go for it. No, no, I, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah, that, that two-week break, I've, I've seen it crush teams before, you know. But at the same time, I mean, 8-0, uh, no, you know, everybody truly believed the Eagles were the team to beat if they could be beat this season, you know, and then to be sitting in the wild card right now. Like, that's got to be demoralizing. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you have, you have to look at it. I mean, I mean I'm, we have three good, solid teams in our, our conference right now. Yep. Yep. You know, we have we all have the same record, the Niners, the Cowboys, and the Eagles, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, our conference are looking tougher compared to the AFC. The only ones who's really looking a good competitive is the Ravens. You know, Dolphins fell off. Chiefs went out. Or, I don't know where Chiefs have gone because due to the whole Taylor Swift, you know, uh, diversion. <laughs> but I'm just saying in our conference, I think that we're going to see a good run for the, the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think we're going to have a good a good run for the playoffs? Um, yeah, well, that's that's kind of a that's I mean, an open ended that's an open ended question. I mean, uh, can you narrow? Can you want to narrow that a little bit? Yeah, it's that's that's a broad question. You want to narrow? Why don't you focus a little bit more about? Um, what do you, okay, if we do. Let's, let's look at the panel real quick. All right, we have a Dallas fan. We have a Bills. We have a Philly. We have a Ram. We Chargers. Have a, Rams slash Chargers. We have an LA fan right here because he's Chargers slash Rams. And Rams are not that far about getting into the playoffs, right? They're about to be in the wild card. Um, I think you guys are going to give the 49ers a run for their money for the last week of the game. Uh, is that when we play the um, – is that when the Rams play the Niners? Yeah. 
Is last that the last game of the season? Last game of the season. Okay, that could that could be a critical, critical game for the Rams to squeak in. Uh, right now, I think the Rams will be the seven seed. They'll they'll squeak into the very last seed. Does that make sense, people? I think they're going to be the very they're going to be the seven seed. And the reason I say that is because we had a huge Monday night upset, huge Monday night upset that uh, that that opened the door for the Rams, and that was the Packers losing. Oh yeah. You yeah. see what I mean? That upset really, really opened the door for the Rams to make the playoffs, and a door that other I thought would have been otherwise closed. I mean, being the Chiefs and going back and you know being on a, a good momentum. I mean, the Packers are slowly coming in. Love, I don't know what he's drinking or what he's taking because <laughs> he's kind of looked like Aaron Rodgers in the middle of the season. I'm, that's just me, just obs- observation, you know, just seeing it. Uh, real quick, let's go to the comments and see some of the some of the fans are writing in there. Uh, we have Nick saying the shifty word world. Yeah, you know we have a good strong running. Oh, yeah, I, I take that back. He's talking about Taylor Swift, Swifty, Swifty world. <laughs> you know. Uh, then we also have. I, I think, and I think, excuse me, if I can interject here, Joey. If I can interject, Joey. I think this whole Taylor Swift fiasco. If I can interject here is a big, big smoke screen and a big distraction. Yeah. I think it's a big, I think she's a big distraction for Why everybody. Why do you think because that is, guys? I mean, that to me is, is you're absolutely right, but it's just, what is there? Is there something behind that whole fucking Swifty stuff? I think the media is blowing it way out of proportion. I think the media is sensationalizing the hell out of Travis, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift as much as they can possibly sensationalize it. Well, what yeah. really has well, that got because, to do? What's that got to do with football, people? Well, people Honestly. pay attention to it, so it's bringing people that aren't interested in football into football, which is going to make them money. Which there is you know. uh, it's, that's what it's all about in the in the long run. You okay, know? so okay, so it's a it's a money making scheme, a money making marketing yeah. exploit, is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, is that I, what you're saying? I, yeah, I'm not sure what that, if that's what the relationship is about, but that's why it's getting the kind of coverage that it is. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see something about one of the two of them. I stop for a quarter of a second, you know. Uh, yeah, and yeah. so, yeah, it, I can't imagine how many millions of people that don't pay attention to football have been paying attention since this has been going on. You're absolutely okay, good right, point. David. On that, good point. So you're draw- so we've drawn. So that your point is we've we're drawing non-real people that weren't really football real football fans across the country and now they're all of a sudden paying attention now yeah i would say the world because she's got a world ball yeah yeah so the so oh so a lot of people across the across the globe that wouldn't necessarily have any affinity towards football now are becoming football fans in, in yeah. a sense yeah yeah which is okay. great for the nfl so I'll give you that. yeah i'm sure that they're I'll gonna that. they're gonna you know, profit from this in any way that they possibly can. So, you know, they're they're going to ride it as long as they can. Yeah, real quick. Uh, Nick says it's basically um, it's an entertainment business. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yep. of course, they're going to draw where the audience and gain new audience. Because if you look right now at the portfolio, it was kind of dipping. Because everyone was already anticipating who was going to be in the next Super Bowl. I yep. mean, if you look already from the script or what everyone's really predicting, at the beginning of the season was the Chiefs and the Ravens. I mean, I take that back. It was the Chiefs and uh, the 49ers. Now they alternate, and it's supposed to be the Chiefs and Dallas Cowboys came out this past week saying that they would prefer to have um, those two teams going into the playoffs. Um, as a Philly fan, I, I really look as like, you know, don't write it yet because you can't – this whole week we've been already writ, uh, written off you know, from Stephen A., Everyone from all the fan base, everyone's saying that, you know, we're ready. Jalen Hurts done. Eagles are done. But if you look at it like this, I'd love to be the underdog. 2007, uh, two, uh, 2017, we were the biggest underdog going into the Super Bowl. I mean, to the playoffs. And then still the underdog competing and w- winning against the Vikings that put us into the Super Bowl and playing against Tom Brady. You know, I look at it like that. Looking back and seeing the history always repeats itself and as Philly or the underdogs. You know, maybe this could be Dallas's year. It could. I, no, I wanna, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> of course, of course, <laughs> of course. And I want to. I wouldn't pay. I put wouldn't put too much credence into ESPN, Stephen A. Smith, and whoever else is 
you know, dominating the headway, dominating the sports programs. This is still get get. This is week fifteen, people. It, we're still in the regular season, okay? Playoffs aren't even close to starting yet. We got four more weeks. Yes, yeah. four more weeks away. Well, you can wanna... speculate all you want, and all the bottom line is it's the regular season, yep. and the playoffs so, are going to be different. So the playoffs started for the Bills already. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Our playoffs started last week. Yeah, and I, I want to point that out in our game against Dallas this week is you're not you're not playing us in the regular season. It's the playoffs for us already. We gotta we gotta win out and we're coming in with that attitude. And if something's gonna give us an edge, that may. Um because uh, you know, whether we can hold it for the duration of the season, uh, eh, that remains to be seen. But if we got an edge going into Sunday this week against uh I think a uh, better all around football team, it's the fact that, you know, we're do or die. For the rest of the season, not only are we do or die, we need a couple of miracles on top of it just to make the wild card, you know. Uh, but uh, as as I say every single Sunday, I believe. So <laughs> keep believing, keep keep. I tell you what, keep believing, and, uh, keep believing in a Super Bowl. I, I feel your pain. I feel Bills fan. I feel your pain. From having gone, I, I can't imagine what it's like. Yeah, to go to the Super Bowl four straight years and not get at least one of them. You yep. guys should have had one of them. Yep, yep. I, I love that our city is like. So are you, are to you gonna blame everything on Scott Norwood? Oh no, no. Are blame the it on Scott Norwood again. City's starting to embrace him again. Like he's like a hero again. For a while, he was like uh, that character in Ace Ventura. Where like he had to go run and hide because uh, people hated him. But like I just saw him in an autograph session in Buffalo not too long ago. It's like, yeah, everybody's everybody's, you know, uh, we still got the bad taste in our mouth. I promise you that uh, we never we never forget that. And then we had twenty six years of nothing after that, you know. Uh, so yeah, and everybody keeps talking about Josh Allen's in his prime. You know, how many years could we possibly make a run? You know, uh, he, you know, you, you don't know. Look at Elway winning those two Super Bowls, you know, uh, in his in his 30s, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that, that that could be correct, you know, but we uh, we have a good team and I, I believe that we'll it will be even more competitive next year. You know, we've we've definitely shot ourselves in the foot. I think we got some ugly attitudes on the team. Stefan Diggs uh, that that just don't sit right and mesh to make a, a, a team play in a you know, uh, the manner that, you know, success calls for. So it's, uh, you know, we, mm -hmm. we got, we got a lot to, we got a lot to prove and we're playing a great team and it's going to be freaking awesome. Man. It really is. Yeah. Our biggest thing I can tell you this is that being that, uh, the Cowboys have, um, won the five, you know, uh, games in a row, they've built up this confidence that it's gonna, you know, really, um, take a lot for the Buffalo Bills to really uh, get in there. And, and hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who did you guys actually, those five wins, the only <laughs> hardest two Wait games was the Seahawks and the Eagles. The Eagles was a blowout. But besides that, you guys did blow every other team out besides the Seahawks. You guys only won, I think, what, by uh, 20 points? points I think. No, less than 20 points. A couple of points, a couple of points, right? So don't, don't even say you guys, okay, you guys got five wins. I respect that. understand that. But a win to win, guys, Joey, this, just like your boy oh, told you on the last podcast where he goes, <laughs> cry, baby, cry. I mean, at the end of the day, a win's a win. Who's the one or, or let's take it back. Yeah. Uh, you, you waited, you waited at the bar and you said you watched the whole fucking game. Tell me the truth. Did you walk away? Or did you, did you watch the whole game? Hell no. I was there. I was there <laughs> all the way, all the way to zero, zero, zero. I know yes. Joey. He's probably you know, saying, was it hard? Was it hard? Oh. My phone was blowing off. People were blowing me up, and yeah. I was there, and people are laughing at me. You know, and I you know it. what's so funny is that as a, and that's was, a real fan. A fan a will drink. stay to the end, no matter what. <laughs> I was sipping a drink, and I text, I text you that, uh, that little, uh, uh, what was it? That post I did, right? And I sent it to you. I was like, oh shoot, Joey's probably really upset right now. Boop. Here you go. <laughs> But yeah, Cowboys was, are gonna bring it, and Bills. So I mean, yeah, we'll see. But Cowboys, I feel so, really good about so the Cowboys. Quick. And uh, Dak Prescott. I wouldn't. I wouldn't get. If I can just interrupt, Cowboys fan, I I wouldn't get too overconfident because 
What do we know about the Cowboys history, especially in their and their recent history? Everyone always hits implode. us with that. Everyone always hits us with that. I understand. I'm, 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 I get upset right towards the end of the damn season where Joey always reemphasizes it every time on the podcast. Dak Prescott somehow fucking fucks it up and we end up going, going back and, you know, into the huddle and seeing what the fuck we're going to do next year. Oh, so this price is not okay. Before we get dive in deep, I want to ask David, what is your predictions of the scoreboard going into Sunday against Dallas? Uh, I, I think it could be a shootout. Um, like I say, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to do best case scenario. Um, we, uh, we have one turnover for the day. I think it's, uh, uh, 42, 37 bills. Take it. 42. We're, wow. We're going high. that high. That's a high yeah, scoring. Be, that's yeah. a pretty high scoring prediction. I'll tell you that. Okay. Well, Dallas has been putting up, Dallas has been putting up points. So for us to win the game, we're going to have to, we're going to have to, we're going to have to put up points like that. Uh, and okay, real quick, Sebi, what is your projections going into the Sunday game against uh, David's team? Uh, I'm I'm going twenty one. You making a sandwich over there? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going twenty one. Ten. Twenty one ten. Hold on, you said twenty one ten. So you guys saying you guys gonna win by twelve points? Oh, easily. Okay. I, with that, with that turnover, that. with that turnover that he just mentioned, and then our kicker doing his thing, we got it. Twenty-one ten, easily. Twenty-one ten. So you going by eleven points. You guys are going by eleven points. So, so you guys are saying two touchdowns. All right. Well, uh, before I say my predictions, what what, what do you think? Well, for the Dallas and Bills, what do you think the game, the scoreboard's going to be? Uh, I think it's going to be a lot tighter. I got a differential of a field goal. I got a three-point win by the Bills. Ooh, that's Ooh. really tight. Keep it tight. Yeah. I like, I like a field goal. Game. I got the Bills by a field goal. Okay, field goal. I got Bills by a touchdown. So I, I say it's going to come down to, uh, you know, Josh Allen, he, he always had those crushing moments, even when we were playing against him. You know, we made a touchdown. He came back within, what, a minute and a half to make a touchdown and send us into the overtime. Yeah. So, you know, I don't sleep on Josh, but then also you can't sleep on Dak. So I say by touchdown. So we're going uh, three for Bills and one for uh, Cowboys. So, but we've, but what is your thoughts, Sevi? You're on the screen. What is your thoughts? On, on this game. What, what, do you, what do you think is going to be the, one of the hardest things going into this game? I know David's really explaining, but like, what do you see that if Dak gets, Dak's going to keep that momentum going into this game, or what do you see? I can see him keep up the momentum going into the game. He's going in confident, yes, against those five wins and all that stuff. But uh, the, ones, the one thing that we have to um, combat is the defense line, defensive line from the Bills. Because the way they freaking hold up uh, Kansas City, it was just—I mean, they—they—they they looked like like to what David said. They looked some days they looked great, some days they looked bad, and this this time they were on and shit. They held them to points. Uh, how many sacks did he have? What's his name uh, from your Bills? How many times did they sack him? I think it was like either tw I, I think Josh Allen. I, I think uh, three three sacks for the game, but he got hurried yeah. a bunch. He got a uh, – Epinesa had a big tip, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's that's are going to be our, our, our biggest thing right there is yep. the defensive line from the Bills. Yep. yep. Now, uh, Brett, what do you think? You think uh, – well, let's move on to the next one because we already got to the projections going on for the Dallas and the Bills. Um. I'm really interested. What are you guys predicting on the the Seahawks and the Eagles game? Before I tell my predictions, let me hear the the panel. What do you guys think, uh, Brett? What do you think about that? <laughs> I love two birds. I love it when two birds go at it. <laughs> I love it when a seagull fights an eagle. <laughs> oh! 
That was a good one. That was a, uh, that was a good Two one. birds are fighting each other. Two birds. <laughs> Two best birds, but the best one's the eagle. A, uh, I think the Eagles will dominate the Seahawks. I think I think this is going to be a statement game. I think it's going to be a frustration game for the Eagles in light of their recent losses that they've had. Yes. I think it's going to I think they're going to make a statement game and they're going to I think they're going to blow out the Seahawks. Blocks. It's a frustration win for the Eagles. And that's not too people is that far fetched? I don't think that's too far fetched of a no. prediction. Yeah. Uh -uh. It's it's going to be a statement game and it's going to be a you know, uh, we, we've got to get back on top game. Yeah. yeah essentially. Like yeah. Jalen Hurts going to bring it up. Going yes. This game. Yes. Uh, just like how Brett said, I mean, like, this is one of the crucial games coming back from two losses. You know, from the Winers, from the Cowgirls. I think, like, right now that all the eyes and the pressures is on him, you know, to see. And this is what I was, saying, I was going to say. To see if he has the leadership and the dog in him, knowing that his mentality after two losses from a quarterback that's been in the league going on three years you know, and having that high title of making it to the Super Bowl yesterday in the second year last year, right? You know, that, no offense, Sevy, and no offense to all the Cowboys fans out there who's watching and listening, but when you set the bar as a rookie coming, coming into the second year and got a championship for the, uh, the conference, now all the eyes are on you because I know we lost back to back, but then you have to keep up that, uh, because you have to keep that uh, that title within you. Because all week they're saying that, that uh, Jalen Hurts is already written off. Jalen Hurts is not going to be the high competitive caliber football uh, quarterback that there was prior before the uh, Niners. Prior and then thinking about going back into the into the uh, into uh, Dallas Cowboys. But here's my prediction. Here's my prediction. I say that. It's better to lose right now in the mid-season than any close of the, the uh, season because coming off a good competition game, it gives the, the whole team to really analyze, make the adjustments before going into the playoffs and knowing that we already, we already lost to two of our high competitive teams in our season and take it back going into the playoffs one step at a time, knocking out the high competitors and if Dallas makes it to, you know, division finals, I think that's going to be the biggest playoff game right there. Eagles and Dallas going back to back in the playoff. I think that's going to be a, a good turnout right there. Oh but, yeah, as always. You know, I, I, would, I would love for, I would love to be back in the Super Bowl. But as I humble myself gently down the road, when you get into playoffs, it's not about the expectation to be on top. But it's about hacking your way up to the top. So I think like taking one game at a time in the wild card to the division, to the conference, then to the Super Bowl. I could say see me in Las Vegas when it's gonna be <laughs> Eagles. <laughs> Eagles. Yeah. And you know, so we might end up in Vegas. We might end up in Vegas. Vegas. We're gonna end up in Vegas watching the game anyway. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, what do you guys uh I could I could see I could see your Eagles winning, you know, because you got, according to this, so they got what five injuries over there at uh, Seahawks, and that alone, man, is it takes a big burden for them to really uh, see who they're gonna put in and step in and, you know, really lead the way, right? Um, I guess uh, I could I could see Eagles winning, you know, and been, and and honestly, Eagles they have a good team, bro. I mean, they they really do. Uh, but they just got to build up some, you know, bring back the, the momentum so they can keep on doing what they're doing. You mean cojones? They need to yeah. get their cojones. <laughs> they got to get that right. They got to get back them. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with your assessment that uh, if there's going to be a losing streak, this was a good time for it. It brings everybody back down to reality, uh, you know, especially the young players, you know, uh, Sometimes young players need a reality check, need that, hey, you know, we're not invincible kind of, you know, gut check to make them play their best, their their best football, you know, later in the season. So, you know, I think I think I agree with everybody. I think it's going to be uh, a lopsided game uh, in the Eagles favor and that, you know, they come out with something to prove to everybody, you know, uh, as a as an athlete, athlete, the majority of my life myself, um, I don't want a wild card, man. I want to win the division. 
period. Yeah. So I'm, I'm upset that I lost to Dallas, you know, um, and uh, I, I want to come out and show everybody that I'm the best team. And, and I'm upset that I lost to the Niners and I want to come out and show everybody, you know, I, I really think they uh, probably crush pretty big time. Who, uh, Bill's fan, who's now, who have you got in your division? Refresh my memory here. Who's, who are you looking up at? Uh, who we're are you guys way, looking up at in the division? Way, way up at Miami. Um, and we got uh, the Jets and, uh, oh, geez, no, I'm drawing a blank. You got me on the spot. New England. So uh, nothing to worry about with New England. Uh, you know, the Jets have been, you know, uh, yeah. really inconsistent. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty bad. Um, they, they didn't look like it week one, even though Aaron Rodgers got hurt two plays in. You know, they destroyed us, but we also shot ourselves in the foot with four interceptions that game. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, it was just Miami we got to worry about, you know, but – then, you know, wild card wise, you know, uh, we've lost some tiebreakers, you know, so it's like we, we literally need a couple of miracles to happen as well as win out for the rest of the season. Yeah, winning out, no question, would, would definitely make a world of difference. Yep. Um, but don't, you have to you have to agree Monday night might have been a turning point for you guys. Because you guys yeah. got, because the the Dolphins got upset, just like the Packers got upset. Oh, that was yeah, crazy. yeah, that was. That's gonna open the door. That could open the door for you guys. With like, yeah. Uh, three minutes in the fourth quarter, end up scoring at least like close to like twelve points to so fourteen points. It, uh, Joey, Joey, it was it was, just, it was an insane comeback. Yeah, yeah. They were down twenty seven to thirteen. I was watching the yeah, game. Okay. 13, and then uh, and then. All of a sudden, all the the score, the touchdowns came out of nowhere, yep. and then and then and then the score was over 27, 28, one yeah. point. That Crazy. that was a that was something that the Bills you know, you look and say you know what that's that could open the door for us. Yep. Right now, our, you, you gotta be play, looking. Oh, sorry. Oh Go yeah, ahead. we we play Miami the last game of the season, right? So it's like not only do we have. You know, we got to play the Cowboys. You know, we got to play. We have we have a couple of other tough games to go, but then 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 we got to prove that we belong there uh, by beating Miami again. And we busted their ass in Week Four. We destroyed them. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> my dentist is one of my best friends, and he's a uh, and he's a Miami fan. And I asked him if he wanted to go watch the game with me. Well, I took him to Anchor Bar, and I didn't tell him it was a Bills Bar. So not a, <laughs> he goes <laughs> he goes. Deck- he goes decked out in Miami gear and to this Bills bar and oh, then just what? watches his team get destroyed. I felt so bad. Wow. I felt so bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the good thing is, Bills fan, the good thing is, Bills fan, you guys are going to control your own destiny because yep. you get to play them again. Yep. You're not going to yep. have to rely on some other team beating the Dolphins. You get yep. to uh, get the chance to, to get into the uh, on the field, so to speak, and 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 make a statement and say, yeah, we're taking the play. We're, we're taking this. Yeah. So minus our game against the Eagles, which, you know, uh, we didn't look all that great. Uh, and y'all played very well. Um, since we fired our offensive coordinator, uh, we've been back to basics and we've been playing really good football. You know, uh, Josh Allen's not forcing it down the field or forcing it into coverage as much. We're getting, the, we're getting passes to the, to the running backs more, you know, um, we've completely, for some reason, taken, uh, taken uh, our number two receiver out of the picture you know um he hasn't caught a ball in like three weeks i don't think um but you know our offense looks good i didn't think firing the offensive coordinator was going to make a difference and it almost instantly did because we got back to basics what i think of is uh free throws and layups you know we're just we're just doing what it takes to you know uh move the ball down the field and uh play really fundamental football so mm-hmm. now Timmy, do you feel like you know, I mean, he has a lot. I think he's ready. He's, I think he's ready to win that game Sunday. You guys are having at least like six injured players, uh, four uh, players that are actually on your defense, and I think one player on your offense. I think it's your, your right guard, your right tackle, if I'm correct, that hurt himself. But, you know, having five players out of the game going into a crucial – because this game is a crucial for you guys because – Dak's on a pedestal right now. Princess Dak <laughs> to see if he can have the same caliber that he's been doing to each and every uh, game, every team to yeah. do it to the bill. Now, what is your thought knowing that David's ready? He, he looks like he's ready. 
You know, they, no, they I mean, adjust- you know what? Dak Dak is humbling himself, bro. At at the end of the day, he 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 loves talking trash. You know that. Uh, but um, I think he, they're I think they're just gonna go in and and uh, really conquer this game, bro. Just because uh, they're uh, the momentum they built up with the five games winning streak that they have. Dak feeling good. Um, shoot, man, I think it's gonna be a really good game. Um, I don't. Other than the de- de- defensive line, then uh, for the Bills, uh, I think that's it, bro. So, and if the weather is still uh, not that cold and they're, it's going to be good, Cowboys are going to kick some ass, bro. Yeah. So, like in my are. in my estimate, the the Cowboys only really need two more wins and they're a lock. You mm-hmm. know, uh, maybe not even two more wins, maybe one more win, right? Yeah. So knowing that you're basically already in the playoffs. You know, do you think that's in the back of a player's head? You know, uh, as yeah. we're, you know, we're we're uh, we're in a situation where it's like win them all or die. You know, uh, we're real close to that fishing trip. You know, so I mean, you you back a dog into the corner and it's gonna, you know, it's not it's not gonna be good. You know, you guys aren't back to the corner. You guys are real comfortable right now. Athletes don't oh, do no. good when they're very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so five five game winning yeah. streak and basically a lock for the playoffs. I mean, I I, I think that uh, the our, intensity yeah. edge goes to us. I see I see Dallas with a straight L going into Sunday, and then I see a W with the Eagles putting us back up. Uh, the Rams, who the Rams play this week? Brett. Um, good question. Anybody know? I forgot who. Oh, I think. Oh, they got the Commanders. They got the Washington Commanders. They're oh, undefeated, yeah. right? The Commanders. Yeah, they're just they're on a, <laughs> a, a, a already. So yeah, that, that should be an easy game for uh, the Chargers, right? Or the Rams? You mean the you mean the Rams? Yeah. yeah. You mean the Rams? Yeah, the Rams. Chargers suck. <laughs> you mean the Rams? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the Rams. Um, um, yeah, the Rams. It'll be a statement win for the Rams. It'll be a frustration win for the Rams after coming so so close. To beating the mighty Ravens. I mean, it's they, they were that was, very that, that was, was that was tight. That was wow. they could have just as easily won that game and that yeah. they lost it despite the 37-31 score. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was this was that game was that close for yeah. them upsetting the, the Ravens. So that they this is a frustration win for them. They're gonna beat the commanders by at least three touchdowns. And, and cra- I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that. And it was crazy because they it, they won by what touchdown? The Ravens they were 37-31. Wow. Just like that. Just like that. Yep. So, uh, oh, uh, real quick, what are you guys' point spread for the Seahawks and Eagles game? What do you guys think? They, are they going to – I'm thinking it's going to be a close game, and I'm going for uh, Seahawks 21 and Philadelphia Eagles with the 32. I think it's, it's, it's going to come down to a good field goal. Jalen Hurts, you can't ever underestimate him in, in, in the 11 you, points. Oh, you got, you're got you going 11-point spread on this one? Yeah, I'm going 11-point spread on this one. Okay, what's the line right now? Have you seen the, the line in I Vegas? I haven't sex. I haven't got a I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's, a, it's a field goal, 3.5. Is that what the Vegas – is that what Vegas has got this? Let me see. Anybody, anybody know what the Vegas odds are on Seahawks and uh, Eagles? Let's see. Let's see what it does. Um, Do we have any questions on the live? Please put in the comments. We'll get to those questions. Thanks for everyone for watching and participating and being part of the talk trash with Joey Fresh. We got my boy Brent. We also have oh. uh, Sevi and David, two amazing fans, uh, Cowboys, the Bills, and your boy. You already know I rep my Eagles. I Great fly point, high. right? Uh, yep. Yeah. Se- Seahawks are plus three. Yeah. Plus. Three. I knew it. Yep. Plus three. Big underdog. Yep. I hate Vegas because Vegas are ninety percent accurate when they go off the spread. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they so they know this is going to be a tight they, game. It's going to be a tight game. It's going to be a tight game. But I hate it because as much as I hate the referees, <laughs> they will. <laughs> I'm just saying, when high money's at stake, they throw the flag. They throw that flag out there to help Vegas win. That's my opinion. That's my thought. I'm just it's saying it. 
It's a business, man. It's not as bad as uh, Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior, but uh, it's a business, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, man. Yeah. Money talks. Yep. Money talks, and plus, right now they're looking. They're, uh, NFL is trying to get a lot of viewers right now. You know, that's where the biggest thing they're trying to get more expertise. Yeah. To yeah, keep especially, looking out. Yeah. especially well, in um, Europe. It's and- isn't it the- yeah, it, it's big. And look how, uh, it, and uh, I'm going to leave you with this. Look how international the NFL has, has become. When you're going to Frankfurt, when you're going to London to play games, you're yep. getting the international exposure you need to yep. really get on the map as far as the world uh, uh, You're right, as the world market. Exactly. Yep. That's all the NFL. That's the only game they're playing by going to Frankfurt and London. I mean, give me a yep. break, people. Yep. Oh, I have a question for David real quick. One of the fans basically said, uh, what do you think about the Packers? So I'm going to ask you, because this is the Packers in you guys' uh, conference, mm-hmm. AFC. So what is your thoughts? And you think that they could start moving up the chain like they've been winning after these past couple of weeks? I mean, surprisingly beating some of these high uh, high elite teams. You yep. know, um, do you guys face them in this couple of weeks or and not no. at all? No, I don't. Uh, no, we don't. We don't play them this season. And the thing is, uh, they uh, in the key positions. I don't believe they have the experience to really go deep. You know, uh, I think I think their yeah. year is in the next couple of years. You know, uh, okay. I think that uh, love love is awesome, and he's got something to show the NFL. Um, and especially once he really has a supporting cast around him. You know, but uh, this year, no, no, unfortunately for them, not. Because uh, when it when it comes down to him having to face uh, the the teams that do have that playoff experience, the teams that do have that veteran you know uh, drive you know behind them, um, I don't I don't think he's going to be able to take those teams out in those crunch times. Yeah, now, like, uh, who would books right? Yep. Dave, David, who would you like to play in the wild card if you make it to the wild card? Who who would be a good matchup with you guys to give you guys the upper? Uh, execution to the next round. Oh, uh, I would love to see the Bengals. One, uh, we owe them, and two, Burrow's out. So it's like, uh, it's it's almost a given game. So it's like I'll feel better after getting our butts kicked last year. Um, you know, by them to go to the AFC Championship, and uh, I think that it it's like it's like a walk for us. You know, um, with uh, <laughs> with Burrow out, I don't think they have a strong enough team to beat us. So I would love to see them in the wild card. Uh, yeah, that, that'd be my top pick. And Sevi, who who do you, who, if you guys, of course, you guys are in the second seed, but who would you guys <laughs> prefer to play? <laughs> For, well, you know what? I look at like, I hope they get the first seed. You know, as a person, as we crunched it at first, yeah. we crunched it at first, but if you look at it like this, from the second, third, and fourth, we'll have to go against some of the weakest teams to make it to the next level. I think. If if the Eagles play, let's say the Saints or maybe the Tampa Bay after we beat them again, I think this would be a good way to, for us to advance to the next uh, playoff to the division. So that's who I predict. I would love to have Tampa Bay again to play in the wild card. Um, but who do you prefer? Uh, who do you guys predict to play in the wild card if you guys have to choose a team? Shoot. Um, I would probably go with um, the the Giants. The Giants are not in the in the wild card. Oh yeah, no. that'd be a good the Giants game. aren't in, aren't the Giants aren't the aren't in the top seven. The Giants aren't in the top seven. <clears throat> you want the Giants? You can have them. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be the Saints, it's going to be the Vikings, or it's going to be Tampa Bay. And those are going to be the ones. Yeah, I honestly think Tampa Bay could, it's got, it could can make the playoffs. They're already in it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're locked. And, but then they're, they're, aren't they hanging by a thread? Aren't they hanging by a thread? Yeah, they're hanging aren't by Aren't they thread. hanging by a thread, though? Yeah. 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 Right? Hanging by a thread. They're hanging by a thread, but hey, we beat them once. I mean, yeah. even though. Hey, Mayfield, he's a good quarterback, but he's not. He's not no Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah, so, really. It's well, nobody who is it's, honestly it's, it's, who is okay. Yeah. Real quick, that's a good question. 
Who I, is? You Brady? know, I, I, that's one thing that really made me really upset. I saw a post of someone saying that Dak Prescott has similar stats. Actually, went over the stats of Tom Brady. But I'm like, you're comparing a goat with six rings, right? Six rings, six rings, seven. and Dak has zero. Oh, yeah, it's not even oh, close. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he could be in a, he could be his stacks every day, every season, until oh. he gets the, just like Le, just like Kobe says, "You're good on paper, but when yeah. you have it on your finger, yeah, you, that, you you're a legend." So whatever you're looking for, you can find it, right? You you can find some stats out there that say Bernie Cozart was better than fucking Tom Brady or Joe Montana or you know uh, whatever you're looking for, you're gonna find it, you know. So I'm I, I'm really skeptical, especially on social media, uh, taking in the stats that people put out. You know, and uh, especially in comparison with people that aren't playing anymore or people that got multiple rings, you know, uh, in, some, in, some, in, in some aspects, you know, uh, you know, you know, Dax, Dax, a good quarterback. He's a really, really good quarterback. You know, so, I mean, some of his statistical stats are going to are going to look good, are going to be in comparison with some elite quarterbacks that are going to be in the Hall of Fame 100 percent. But I mean, when it's all said and done, is is Dak getting the yellow jacket? He's, he's got to get some rings. Yeah. He has, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. He has first. First, he has to win an NFC champ. You know, conference <laughs> uh, champ first. I mean, yeah. Twenty-seven years kind of dried up. You know, when people says the last time uh, Cowboys won, I was a a seed in a nut. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Cowboys may have it this year, but. We'll love to see a good challenge. Now, um, do you think the Rams have enough uh, enough juice to make it to the wild card? Um, it's going to be very close. And then, and if anybody's hanging by the thread, it's the Rams. I mean, they're they only lucked out, and they're only in this position because they lucked out on Monday Night Football. <laughs> because they wouldn't have been in. I don't think they would. I, don't, I think this is the only way that game on Monday was the only only scintilla of hope of them getting into the playoffs. And it's a toss up. I mean, they could just they could miss it as easily as they can make it. I mean, they gotta they gotta be focused and they might have to even have to win out to win the to get to a playoff seed. Well ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to thank you guys for so much uh jumping on the Facebook Live, jumping on Spotify worldwide. Uh I really appreciate all our guests that participate in this amazing uh, panel. You know, shout out to my boy David, shout out to my boy Sevi, also Brent, your boy yourself, Joey Fresh. Um, as well, you know, having a platform for all the fans and your team to be on the air with your boy Joey Fresh, talk trash with me, let's run it, let's get together, give it up to these amazing guys. And I know for a fact that this Sunday is gonna be a game changer for a lot of teams. Uh, I'm rooting for the Bills. And I'm laughing at the, the Cowboys. And so. Because <laughs> they're in the division. They're division yeah, rivals yeah, for they're, you. Yeah, yeah. they're biggest rivals. Yeah, you know. He didn't, he didn't so, think we would get there, but we did. Surprisingly, you know, I, I really appreciate. And the award goes to the referees for helping you guys out. Oh, I love it. I love it. That, that's what I said when we played you guys, the Eagles. Oh. That, yeah. You know what? Okay. It was karma. Karma came back. Karma came back. I, I, I'll say that. Yep. Uh, so once again guys I thank you guys for jumping on you guys have a good night a blessed night yep. Yep. you guys God be bless. safe thank you good luck good thanks yep. for thanks for having me joy thanks for inviting me to podcast Bill's fan I hope you I hope you do it I hope you make it there this year I hope for good things for the Buffalo Bills you know I, I really do thank you see you guys